Well, good morning. Um, I wanted to really thank Dr. Lokuheti for a really great talk and for the opportunity to collaborate as an organization. Um, so I'm going to spend a few minutes updating you about what's going on with the CCGA. The CCGA is the Compendium of Cancer Genome Aberrations, and it's a program of the CGC. It's a collaborative effort to describe chromosome and gene level abnormalities in cancer in a clinical context, what's clinically relevant, because the idea is to use this for our clinical reporting. It's publicly available. It's a free online resource. You can find it at ccga.io. And the idea is to act as a centralized hub of information. So you, go to, you have a case, and you go to this site, and you have some pertinent information there, as well as linking out to any other important resources out there, like Civic, et cetera, to get the information that you need. Um, it also has some data visualizations. And importantly, the idea is to have genetic evidence present related to the diseases that we find in the WHO classification tumor books, the blue books, as you heard mentioned. Um, and it's also a wiki-based site, so that means you can update in real time to try to keep up with the rapidity of the literature being produced. In a nutshell, the, the blue books by the WHO are produced every three to five years, right? And the problem is genetics moves faster, so this can act as a companion resource to have real-time updating based on the wiki nature of the site for the genetic content with the diseases. So you can, let's say you want to do CML, you can go to the CML page, you can see the genetics. You can do a PubMed search at that moment. Oh, there's a brand new paper that's pertinent. You can add that in in a minute, right on the site, and then it's available for you and everyone else. So that's how the site's supposed to work, with clinically important information. And we all know what we need to know for reports. There's a number of ways to navigate, but I'm just going to point out the image of the, the blue book on the side where you can click on that and actually get the classification tree from that book and find your entity that way. There's a number of different pieces of content, but we're really, really focused on the genetics. So gene fusions, individual regions of copy number gain and loss, characteristic chromosomal patterns such as hyperdiploid, hypodiploid, et cetera. Gene mutations, the really pertinent ones, I, I want to emphasize that, you know, there are actually a lot of great websites, like I mentioned Civic, but there's many others that have good small mutation information, so we just link to those um, as well, and, and clinical significance. We have permission to include all of the recurrent loci tables <clears throat> from the working groups from the CGC, and we have other data visualizations, visualizations as you can see there. A lot of what's been happening over this last year is we've been further defining the programmatic vision in anticipation of starting to apply for grants. We've been working with an experienced nonprofit program specialist, um, and we've defined a five-year program vision. We've created new roles and non-volunteer effort requirements, developed a budget, wrote an explanatory narrative so that people who could potentially fund us would understand what we are trying to do, and we're investigating those nonprofit grant opportunities, in particular targeting initially smaller foundational grants with anticipation of them going for larger NIH in the future. This is the current state of leadership. Uh, I'm just going to briefly say that, you know, we have some new roles under editor-in-chief. We now have a technical and a content deputy editor role for leading larger specific efforts, in addition to still our associate editors that are overseeing diseases, um, specialties like AML, ALL, et cetera, and a technical editor um, that all work with authors. We have a CCGA work group that includes this leadership as well as um, providing um, additional individuals that can work on other aspects of the project. So right now in the purple is our only currently paid individual, so we have an IT support, but I'm gonna show you our plan changes that. We also have a communications liaison that manages our online presence. So here's our five-year plan. I'm not gonna go into any details, but I just wanna say that you can see that we have quite a big plan for expansion, including additional paid opportunities. Okay, so you heard about this from Dr. Lokuheti, um, basically that CGC and IARC are collaborating and that we will be actually also reaching out to contributors to the books to help contribute to CCGA. The interlinking is indeed happening. You can go to their site and find a link to CCGA under the useful links content. We also have linked to both the online version of the books and their website, IARC. The QR codes are planned to be put in the printed version of their books for CCGA. 
and we're going to be linking the disease pages by, in the online book diseases, placing a link to the related book structure, tree structure on our site so that people can go and then find the link to the individual page uh, of the disease they want on the CCGA site. Very briefly, I'm just going to say we have many other efforts going on. We're creating additional content. We are streamlining automating processes. We're standardizing editorial processes. Uh, we're exploring collaborations with other organizations like Civic. Please visit our booth in the back by the end of the day if you can and volunteer because you can actually get a chromosome, potentially a little glass chromosome for a drawing tonight. I want to thank everyone. It really does take a village to get this done. Thank you.